ready for the next stage and that is to fit this rotor spindle mounting um, onto the lower half of this right there and to do so I'm going to make a simple jig. Uh, I require a jig because the holes, I'm going to put four holes through here and four holes in, in the plate itself um, and they you know they have to be fairly accurate so I, I'm good and because this is a rounded base and I have to drill it up that way down through this way I have to support it like this so I'm going to make a simple jig out of some 4x2 to hold it square underneath the drill press to drill them but I've got a little job to do uh, which you may have the same problem um, so this is this is a very very good casting very good quality however they have sort of faced it or should we say half faced it and I've just put a bit of paper on there and you might be able to see there's a machine mark there oh, let's pick it that might be better you see the machine mark here well this is ever so you know a couple of thousandths of an inch maybe a little bit more maybe about five though uh, stood proud of the rest of this so that means when it's bolted onto the, the face plate here or the z-axis plate uh, it's going to be cockeyed so I'm going to surface this very simply um, and I'll show you how to do that so you don't need anything very high-tech or you don't need any high-tech you don't need any high-tech equipment um, all you need is a nice flat surface uh, this is a little bit of MDF actually and a nice bit of what is this 80 grit and it'll take about probably maybe 20 minutes hold it flat and it's, it's just coming down all right I did give this a bit of a rub on here before to clean it up so you could see you know the uh, the machining mark easier but uh, it's the way to get it down okay can you see that I'm gonna get in the right light for you to see I think you can see that there that well basically all around the perimeter there is you can see it's been it's machined uh, but the center it has not um, that is because I would suspect that uh, the big mill or whatever was used to surface this um, I'd say it was uh, the it was at a tram <laughs> and uh, yeah you can see the result but now I know this is going to be nice and square on here so I'm going to mark out and drill this first then I will clamp this to this plate and then drill that plate out through this in other words use this is a template after I've drilled this out. When you're marking out aluminium, especially something nice and shiny like this, um, when you're trying to put a scribe line on there to, to, to mark out exactly where you want to put a hole, just a little tip, get a sharpie, I'm just colouring 
the area where you know that you're gonna, you know, the rough area you're gonna put a, a hole and give it a few minutes to dry. I mean, the, the real, the real marking stuff is called Engineer's Blue, but uh, a lot of you won't have that. And this works just as well. Give it a good coating. Wait for it to dry. Now you can use a, a ruler and just put a little mark, little mark, and then draw a line. But I find it easier with a pair of pair of these. I've got it met. Uh, I've already got it set at ten millimeters. So. The line but much easier, at least I can from here. I don't know whether the camera's picking that up. So I do it a bit deeper for it. Might pick up a bit better. I've just simply got an Irwin clamp and I've clamped it to this uh, Z-axis plate and I can feel that that is pretty level. I can't feel a, a difference there at all. Um, I just want to make sure I have got this in the central position and I got six millimeters there and we're at six and a half there. That's a little better. All right, so what I'm going to do is just mark the plate uh, underneath for drilling. So I've got a, the same size drill as this, which is a tapping size for 8mm metric. So I'm just going to mark the plate on the back side. You know, you need to get it need to get it as close as you, you can like this. Um, but what I'm going to actually do is drill these holes oversize so I have wiggle room and I can get I can tram the tram it in, you know? So the, the spindle is absolutely vertical. So I so I'm just marking the plate. That's all I was after. I mean, you could go through the trouble of uh, actually draw, scribing lines and marking it out, but you know, this is a lot easier. But uh, so now all I've got to do is dismantle this whole plate and, uh, well, drill these holes out and tap the thread in them. And again, nothing fancy or complex. Just a piece of MDF, a uh, piece of 4x2, <laughs> and uh, just a bit of packing material here, and, and this just happens to be the right size, um, just to hold it flat. As long as you're careful, you don't, uh, you don't need a vice of any sort. All you have to do, this is a pilot hole, this is an eighth inch. 
So we'll drill that. I'm just going to just sort of nip them up, not exactly tighten them down because I'm going to want to, you know, sort of get the, the motor vertical. Where's my hammer? So now what I want to do is fit the spindle in and have a look see what it looks like. Okay, so now is quite a significant moment putting the spindle in here. It's going to take on a whole new appearance, I think. Um, let's just check. I'm going to have to open that up a little tiny bit, I think. This type of clamp, it has two clamping bolts and this is a spreader. So I've already slackened these off, so just that probably should be enough. Put a block of wood in under there because it's it's about 11 12 kilos, okay, which is what 25 pounds. So it's a, a fair old amount, you know. So I want to take it in there slowly and just let it come down to rest on here. I'm going to grab it. So this is a 3 horsepower or 2.2 kilowatt. Not quite going to go in there is it? Oh, I can't hold it with one hand. Really. So it's a fair old sizeable motor. Oh, there we go. Coming through. Uh, this is how I normally adjust my spindle in its housing because it's adjustable by you know, 125 millimeter, as well as what's in here. So take it about halfway, I think. Maybe a little more. Goes out the front like that. I think that'll be just fine there. And release this. And then tighten these up. Beautiful. And that's what you should be able to do with the weight of this on here. It shouldn't drop down by itself, okay, which it doesn't. And you should be able to screw it all the way up and down with your fingers and f be able to feel the, um, the resistance there. Look at that. I'll zoom you out a bit. So we've achieved a lot in this video. May not look too much, but uh, you know, sort of getting all these drawings somewhere near right, and uh, you know, getting this mounted in here. You know, it's quite an achievement. And um, bar 
the little housing here which connects the born, Z axis ball nut to this uh, drive plate, Z axis drive plate. You know, this has all been handmade uh, with a cordless drill and a, a good saw to cut the aluminium and um, just drills and files and nothing else. You know, sort of measuring equipment. Is it would pay to get one of these? This is a, a, a vernier, digital vernier. I find easy. I find these easier to read, especially at my age. <laughs> and uh, precision, little engineer's rule. You know, and twelve-inch rule or oh. three hundred millimeters. And a square. Uh, I've got a couple of different squares I use. This is one. You can, you know, do a lot with this, like line the the, the gantry up and what have you. Uh, which I've, I've done roughly, just to, you know, get it assembled. But you know, it, when I've completed it, it'll all need fine tuning. Uh, which is done fairly easily. So I'm very happy. <laughs> very happy I've got this far. Um, I'm a little bit behind schedule. I uh, was hoping to have this running by the end of January, January but I don't think I will. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll, we'll see. So thank you for joining me for this video. If if you've liked the video, please like and subscribe, and if you would like to support the channel, and if you like what I'm doing, and you would like to support the channel, you could go and visit my Patreon pages. Uh, there's a link for Patreon uh, down underneath this uh, video in the video description area. You'll also find a 20% discount for Fusion 360. Also a discount code for the Cavco programs. That is well worth it. And it even applies to the industrial program. So you know you can you can save a lot of money with that. Um, also if you're in, if you're in the market for a new computer, Hewlett and Packard. There's a discount code for the Hewlett and Packard uh, laptops, all desktops, all printers, any of their products there. So, thank you for joining me, and I hope you tune in for the next exciting episode of building this, the Amax CNC router. All hand-built. Bye for now.